Hello everyone, I'm so glad that you could join me again. For today's episode, I have decided to do a Q&A. Now the reason why I've decided this is because this channel has grown quite a lot in the last few months. We've got a lot of new people who've joined us. And when I'm reading through the comments, I do see these questions that pop up again and again. So I thought that this was a really nice opportunity for me to answer those questions and help people to learn more about this channel and about me. So I want to thank everybody who sent in a question. I read through most of them. There were a lot of them, so thank you. And I'm going to try to condense all of those questions into my answers that I'm going to give today and hopefully answer most things that were asked in just a few questions. So thank you very much and I hope that you enjoy the video. So the first question is, what inspires you and when did you decide to start sharing your journey with us? Now I thought that this was a really great question to begin because it will kind of tell people who are new and maybe people who've been here from the beginning why I decided to start a YouTube channel and how I'm inspired to carry on. So if you've watched a few of my previous videos, you will have heard me talk about Vanessa. And Vanessa is my business partner. We've been working together since last year. And really, it is her that we have to thank for this channel. Because um, I was actually uploading videos to YouTube about March last year, but not because I wanted to start a channel. It was just simply a place for me to store longer videos. What I was doing was uploading videos to Instagram on IGTV, but you can only upload 15 minute videos there and any longer they, they don't accept them. So if my videos were longer than 15 minutes, I would edit them down for Instagram and then I would store the longer version on YouTube. And it was just simply a place for me to keep them without having to have lots of, use up lots of storage on my phone. Then when I started working with Vanessa, she said, have you thought about joining the YouTube partnership program? And I'd never thought about that. So we looked into the guidelines and you had to have a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watched hours. This was back in September and we didn't have a thousand subscribers and we didn't have 4,000 watched hours. So that was something that we all, that we worked on and suddenly just started to grow. I think my first video that I uploaded, which was how to create the perfect afternoon tea at home, it did go a little bit viral. We had a lot of views on there, and I think that's where the subscribers started to come in. And then when we reached our goal of a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watched hours, that's when I began to think, well, people seem to quite like these videos. Let's start focusing on YouTube. So that is how I began sharing content on YouTube. And I'm so glad that I did. In September, we didn't have a thousand and now we've just reached a hundred thousand. It's going quite well and people are enjoying it, which is all that matters to me is that people really enjoy the content and they learn something from the videos or just take some enjoyment from it. Now for the first part of the question, what inspires you? I am inspired by living in a way to make every day more beautiful. And that is always what I'm trying to do with this channel. So it's not about being perfect or being an expert at anything. It's just about finding the small moments of joy in life, whatever they may be, and enhancing our lives. Especially this last year, we've gone through a hard time. We're all living under stress. So what can we do in these days to make life better and more fun? And I think when I first started using Instagram about seven years ago and you really connect with all these people who live incredible lives, who've got amazing careers, you see the way that they live. And I think that is what I was inspired by, looking at people who live elegantly, beautifully and just make the most from every little moment. So that is what I hope to do here. Sticking on the theme of YouTube, the next question is what advice would you give to someone who wants to start their own channel or for someone who wants to grow their audience? Okay, so I thought this was a great question as we just spoke about how my YouTube began. And even though I've only been here for a very short time, I think that there's a lot of things that I've learned and a lot of things that I think have helped 
me to grow and build the audience. So I'm going to share that with you now. So I think the most important thing, whether you're starting a YouTube channel or whether you're looking to start a business or begin anything new, is to make sure that whatever it is you're doing, you're completely and utterly passionate about it. Otherwise, you're not going to get out of bed in the morning. You're not going to really focus on what you're doing. You have to be 100% committed and 100% in love with the work that you do. And I can say for myself, that is probably why people connect with what I'm doing, because it really is something that I'm very passionate about. Now, I am not an expert in anything that I share. In fact, oftentimes I in almost every video that I've made, I will always make a little mistake and people will comment about it in the comments section. And I'm really not embarrassed about that because I'm not an expert in everything. All I am is somebody who loves beautiful things and who loves to share. So it's absolutely fine that I make mistakes in my videos. I love that people comment and tell me the right way of doing things. So it's very, very, very useful for me to learn from you as well as you learning from me. So I think that is the most important thing. Even though I'm not an expert in everything I do, I am passionate about beautiful things. So I'm able to tell a story with what I'm doing and really convey that to you so that you can find some enjoyment from the videos. So that is my number one tip. Firstly, make sure you're absolutely passionate about the subject that you're working on. And that is the best foundation that you can have. The next tip that I have is to surround yourself as much as possible with people who can help you to achieve your goals and dreams. Even if you can just find somebody who can mentor you and advise you, that is also something that I think is highly, highly useful. I think what you will find about anyone who's had any degree of success is that they all had a mentor or someone to boost them up a little bit. Nobody can do this on their own. We all have to have help. So that is my next piece of advice. Absolutely embrace any help that you can get. Go out and talk to people, message people on social media. Don't be scared. I know from my experience, when people message me and ask for advice, I'm more than happy to, to do that. And I think that probably a lot of people feel the same way. So don't be shy, ask people for advice, speak to as many people as you can and really hustle out there and get people on your side. Thinking about YouTube in particular, I think that one of the most important things is consistency. Now, I have uploaded a video every single Friday since I began this channel. And I think that is one of the reasons why the algorithm maybe works in my favor and people are seeing this content. I think YouTube definitely likes that consistency. So I think you need to be able to commit to finding a schedule that works for you, whether that is once a week, every single day, once a month. But once you've decided what you're going to do, you have to stick to it and you have to keep going. Now, that is one of the things that I have found very useful with having a partner is that because we have established a business together, this is not just something that I'm doing as a hobby. I have to commit for myself and for my business partner. So I know that every single week there's going to be a YouTube video we have it planned out months in advance of what the subject is going to be. I've talked about that quite a lot. Sometimes we change things, but mostly we have a three month plan ahead so that we know exactly what we're doing, where we need to film next week, what we need to have ready. So that is the way that I can be consistent and ensure that every Friday I have a video to put out there. And now I've decided to do a video on a Wednesday as well because people were asking for more. So I had to really think about that long and hard. Am I able to commit to doing a short video on a Wednesday and a Friday? So whatever you decide to do, make sure that you be consistent. You can't be uploading once and then not doing it for four weeks. You have to have a, a very nice consistent pattern so that people who are watching you know that on a Friday, you're going to be there and you're going to be uploading a video that they can enjoy. And I think that is what YouTube rewards. The last thing that I will say about growing your audience or growing a channel is that you really need to think about the long term. And if you are starting to gain a little bit of traction, I think you need to make a plan to see whether it's viable for you to make this your full time job. Now, I was working for myself for many years, so I was able to say to myself last year, okay, 
YouTube is going pretty well. I need to make sure that this is my focus. Obviously, my business isn't just YouTube. I'll talk more about that a, a bit later on. But I think if this wasn't my full-time job, I would not be able to do it. If I had another job, I was working for somebody else, there's absolutely no way that I could work another job and then focus on YouTube. There would be no time to plan the content, no time for filming. So again, it goes back to the consistency. It would be very, very hard to be so consistent. Now, maybe you are somebody who is has super energy um, and you'd be able to do that. But for me, I know that I had to say at some point, this has to be a full-time job and that is what I'm going to do. So I think, think about the long term, think about how, when you can afford to do that and if it's viable for you and I think even and that's the same with any business if you're working for somebody else and you're deciding that you want to start your own business at one point you have to say quit the day job go full steam ahead and take the risk to make your dreams come true the next question is hi Nicholas where do you see yourself in 10 years Whew. 10 years is a really long time if I think back 10 years and all the things that's happened that's when you realize just how long 10 years is. So that is a really great question. And I do often think about the future a lot. I think it's really important to plan ahead, but 10 years is a very long way away ahead. And I hope that it goes really, really slow. And actually this was a question that I got quite a lot. Some people ask, where do I see myself in two years, five years? But a lot of people want to know about what the plan is for the future. So I will share a little bit of that with you now. In terms of uh, my work and what I'm doing, the plan is to continue with YouTube, which I really, really enjoy and creating beautiful content. In terms of content, I would really love to push forward to the next level. My dream when I thought about creating videos was to maybe have a house, a base, even though I've got this flat, it's quite small, I'm limited with what I can do. I would absolutely love to have a little country house and for that to be my base for creating content. And I would create content around that. So for example, um, creating a beautiful garden, decorating the interiors, doing cooking and recipes inside, basically just sharing the house and using that as a base for this channel so that we can do lots of wonderful videos. So that is one of the things that I would like to do in the next 10 years. And also that links to something else. So I do not own my own house at the minute. I'm renting and I would really love to be able to buy a house. I think that it is one of the things that helps you to be secure. And I know that once I own a house, I will feel a lot more relaxed about life and I will be able to just breathe a little bit more. But I really would like to be able to own a house. So hopefully those two things will go hand in hand and the house that I buy will also be the place where I can continue to share and do beautiful videos. In terms of my business and this brand, we do have a lot of plans and some of the things that we're doing have already began. So maybe you don't know, but this YouTube channel is one of the uh, aspects of this business, but also we are developing our own product. So just before Christmas, I launched a limited edition set of linen napkins and that was kind of a test whether they were just interested in watching the, ch the the youtube content or whether they actually were interested in buying products and that went very very well so we decided to create more products and i've been doing that since the beginning of this year so i'm creating a teaware collection which will be a teapot teacups milk jug sugar bowl maybe a few other items it's based around the garden i've spoken about this a little bit in the past and if you're signed up to my newsletter on nicholasfairford.com i do send updates there so that you can learn more so yeah i've got a teaware collection coming up hopefully in the summer what i've learned from starting my own business and starting from scratch is that things take a lot longer than you expect and it's not always plain sailing so plan ahead and plan for contingencies because they're always going to come along. I'm also developing my own scented candle. I've got the fragrance. It smells really, really amazing. I'm so excited to share this fragrance with you because it is what I've dreamed of and I think you will love it. So I'm doing that. And then in terms of the next few years, I would really like to achieve 
a lot of things, mostly lots more product for the home, beautiful things. I know that over the years I've been so frustrated with thinking of items that I really want to have but not being able to find them. So if I can create these items and share them with everybody else, I think that would be very nice. That would be something that I'd really like to achieve. I'd also really, really love to have my own book. And I have seen that this is one of the questions that I've been asked quite a lot. Are you going to have your own book? And the answer is yes, I would absolutely love to have my own book. I've got a few ideas of a book that I'd like to make. But really, it's not down to me. It's about whether a publisher wants to take the book and take the risk in publishing a book. But the main idea that I have for a book is a beautiful coffee table book about afternoon tea and basically talking about the history of tea. So we'd explore all the historic locations where tea was a social occasion for aristocrats and royalty and then moving on to afternoon tea at home. So how you can create the perfect afternoon tea at home and all the beautiful things that go with that like teaware, china, linens, um, how to set the table. Then there would be a whole section of recipes from sandwiches and savouries to cakes and scones. Um, maybe some tea uh, blends and cocktails, drinks. And then the final section of the book would be afternoon tea all around the world. So traveling to different locations and having beautiful afternoon tea there and some of the places that I really loved having afternoon tea. Books are very risky things. You have to have an audience. So maybe it's something for the future, but that is one of the things that I would really love to do. The next question is, hi Nicholas, we really love watching you on YouTube. Who do you enjoy watching on YouTube? Now that is a really great question um, and I'll be completely honest about it that I am not really somebody who watches a lot of television and so YouTube was not really in my life until I started uploading content. I never used to watch YouTube very much. I used to search for if I wanted a recipe or something I would look on YouTube then but I was not somebody who looked through finding people to subscribe to and sitting there watching them. But since I started my own channel, I do it more often now. And some of the people that I really enjoy are people who I've seen mentioned in my comments. So sometimes people comment and say, oh, your channel reminds me of this channel or this channel. And one of the people who I really adore watching because of a comment in my videos is Kylie Flavel. Now, if you follow Kylie, you will know exactly what I mean. If you don't, you need to check her out. She is a Australian girl who's living in Italy with her fiance, and she makes the most beautiful videos that I've ever seen in my entire life. She is extremely talented with cinematography, filming, editing, sound, everything that she knows she is self-taught. And I absolutely am in awe when I watch her videos and see the quality. I mean, they're real, the highest quality that you can imagine. It deserves to be on TV winning awards. That's how wonderful the quality of her content is. And I just love the way that she tells these beautiful stories through her cinematography. And you can just tell that this is her passion. She spends hours and hours and hours editing, making sure that everything is exquisitely perfect. So as somebody who makes my own videos and does everything myself, I can really appreciate the extra level that she must have to do to make her videos so exquisite. So even though I will never ever have the incredible quality that she has, it is beautiful for me to watch her and be inspired. So she's one of them. Another person who I really love to watch is Audrey Coyne and I found her after she commented on one of my videos. One of the reasons why I like to watch Audrey is because I find her incredibly relaxing. Even though she talks more about women's style, um, I actually just like listening to her voice. I find it very calming and I love the way that she shares very elegantly her passion. And I think that is what I like about some of these YouTubers that I've mentioned. I think on YouTube there tends to be a lot of younger loud people who are sharing content but I really like to be relaxed and I like to watch um, something a little bit different and I think that's what Audrey offers and I think she's very very soothing so I enjoy her. And one final person that I want to mention is somebody else who I saw in the comments that a lot of people were mentioning and that is John McLean and I 
I saw in my comments a lot of people saying, oh, your content is reminding me of John McLean, and I saw that a few times, so I thought, I need to check out who is John McLean. So, about three weeks ago, I started looking at John McLean's videos, and like all of you, I am obsessed. I really love the videos that he makes. And those of you who follow him will know that he came back yesterday after a year of not creating any videos and I was reading through his comments on his video and it was so wonderful to see how happy everybody was that he was back. For me, because he's a new discovery, I only missed him for two weeks. So it wasn't as painful for me as it was for some of you. So yes, I really, those, those three people are um, my biggest three on YouTube who I love to watch. Um, unique content, very soothing, relaxing, and very talented people who bring something a little bit different to YouTube, and that is what I really like. So this next question is probably the most asked question for this Q&A, and I've noticed it being asked quite a lot in the last few episodes, so I'm going to answer it now, and that is, are you no longer a vegan? Well, I just want to start by saying that there is a difference between vegan and being plant-based. A vegan is somebody who is more concerned for the ethical welfare of animals, so they don't eat or wear any animal products. Somebody who is plant-based, even though they probably do care about animal welfare, it's more for health and dietary reasons. Now for me, I decided to become vegan about three years ago, plant-based about three years ago, because I had gallstones. Now, I had that for quite a while and it was really, really unpleasant, one of the worst pains ever. And then I had to have my gallbladder removed and my doctor advised me that just to keep my body in balance and to support the ongoing health of me, that a plant-based diet might be something that would be useful. So from then I decided to be plant-based. Uh, that was on a Monday and I was plant-based for the whole time and I never had any animal products. However, I did still wear leather shoes, I wore leather belts, I have suede jackets. So it was more, even though I do care about animals, I'm not going to pretend that I don't, I love animals. For me, it was more of a health reason for being plant-based. Now, in the last year, I would say because of the lockdown, cooking every single day, having to think of new recipes. I became a little bit bored with my diet and I always tell people that you should do exactly what makes you happy. And so I decided to introduce a few more uh, things into my diet. So I still don't eat meat. I probably will never eat meat, but I'm never gonna say never, but I don't think so. I don't really enjoy meat, um, but I do, I have started to eat fish. So. I will have fish maybe twice a week. I've also started to eat eggs. I think I mentioned in another video that if I'm eating eggs, I only eat eggs that I know for sure that um, they've been, they come from chickens that are very, very free range. So I know that a lot of these eggs that you see in supermarkets that say free range are not really free range. So the eggs that I buy are from a friend who has her own chickens and I know for a fact that they have a wonderful life, so that makes me feel much better about eating eggs. So yes, even though I've started to eat a little bit more fish and I'm starting to eat eggs, mostly I would say that I'm still very much plant-based. I still, the lot of dishes that I really love are plant-based, so there's no point changing them, I still enjoy them. Also, a lot of the products that I use are still plant-based, again, because I've just got used to them. For example, I only drink plant-based milks. I would never go back to dairy because I got used to drinking plant-based milks and I don't think I would enjoy drinking milk from a cow anymore. Also, some of the recipes that I make are plant-based. For example, some of the sponge cakes that I make don't have any animal products and because they're really delicious, there's no point changing those either. So it's just keeping my diet, even though my diet has changed a little bit, I've just introduced a few more things. I decided for me that was the best option. You should decide for you what is the best thing for you and just be happy. Another question that I got asked quite a lot was for tips about personal style when it comes to clothing and where I like to shop. Now really the only place that I tend to shop 
mostly is in Zara and the reason for that is because it's affordable and I think they have some nice simple elegant clothing. I usually stick to basics, I wear a lot of the same things again and again so I've got a lot of uh, long sleeved knitwear in crew neck, straight leg pants, a lot of the things I wear are very, very, very much the same. I don't go for patterns, I usually go for planes. So Zara has those in abundance. That's where I tend to shop. Now what I do to kind of make my clothing look a bit more expensive is I take them to the local tailor here in Edinburgh and I have them just adjusted slightly so that they fit me perfectly. And I think that is the key to looking your very best. Anybody who's got a lot of money will have their clothes made bespoke, whether they're going to a designer and then having adjustments made. But that I think that is the key to looking beautiful. Um, and actually when I talked about Audrey Coyne, she often talks about how you can have things adjusted so that they look like they've been perfectly made just for you. I'm a very short person. One of the questions was asking me how tall I am, so I'm about five foot six, so I'm very short. I have to have all of my trousers and jeans altered, otherwise they're dragging on the floor. And I will also have them just adjusted to make them a little bit more narrow through the legs. So I've recently changed the type of style of trousers that I wear. I used to wear quite slim jeans and I'm thinking now that I prefer a more uh, looser fit. So not completely, but uh, I like to have them quite fitted on the thighs and then as they go down the leg a bit more wide and the tailor does that for me and I think that really helps me to look a bit more balanced and structured. So my advice is buy what you can afford, but if you can afford to also take the items to a tailor and make minor adjustments, that will also really help. Another example is clothing on the shoulders. I have a lot of jackets um, and because I'm a small person, the shoulders always come slightly down here and it, that looks really awful. It looks like you are a little person who's wearing your father's clothes. So I always have the shoulders adjusted to fit me and also the arms. Nothing worse either than when you've got a jacket and the sleeves are coming down here on your hands. I like to have everything nicely clipped so that it, and all of those things just help you look a bit more streamlined and much better. What I would also say is that you need to figure out what suits you and your body type. We're all different, we all have different bodies. And I think what I am good at is looking in the mirror and putting on an outfit and then I can recognize why it isn't really working. For example, it might be that the cut of a pair of trousers is not working, it's making me look unbalanced. So then I will eliminate those types of trousers forever, never wear them again, never buy them again. So I think I have found a way to dress where I found what suits me and my body. I'm a small person, so I have to try and keep myself looking pretty uniform up and down, not blocking myself out with colors and patterns. So you need to find out what your style is, find it and then stick with it. So I think people are very, very obsessed with sticking with trends, following fashions, and not really looking to see whether it suits them or not. So try and stick with a few key pieces that you really love, and I think that is what works best. So I really hope that you have enjoyed this Q&A and it's helped you just to learn a little bit more about this channel and about what's going on with me. Before I go, I just want to thank everyone who has congratulated me on reaching 100,000 subscribers. I'm totally in shock still. I can't quite believe that it's happened. I never ever expected this to happen to me and it wasn't really in my plan. So to reach that milestone very quickly as well is just pretty insane. And I want to say thank you to everybody who has joined me for this, whether you've watched my video from the very beginning or whether you're pretty new. I really appreciate all the support. Every time I post a video, I'm overwhelmed with wonderful comments and those are what keep me going and keep me inspired to really push forward ahead and keep creating content. So to each and every one of you, whether you, even if you haven't subscribed, you just like to watch this channel, um, I really appreciate all your views and your comments. Now to celebrate 100,000 subscribers, I want to ask you a question. Would you like me to do a special 
event for that. My initial thoughts are that I could do a YouTube live in a few weeks and we could all maybe have a party together like a, a champagne tea party or something like that. That is my initial thoughts but if you have any ideas and uh, thoughts let me know and if you think that's a good idea please do get in touch to let me know and I think we could have fun together doing that. So I will see you on Wednesday for tea time treats but until then have a really great weekend and a wonderful a week. Bye bye. I could feel.